citizen candidates who advocate anti-working people policies are the results of Tuesday's primaries. Good news for Democrats. We'll talk about Christine O'Donnell's upset win over incumbent Mike Castle in Delaware's Republican primary. There's similar news in New York, where Tea Party favorite and way outsider Carl Palladino beat Republican pick Rick Lazio in the governor's fight. Democrats are hopeful over the way their fortunes just might have changed. Who is outfoxed now? We'll talk to the man who brought you the movie Outfoxed about Rupert Murdoch, the founder and president of Brave New Films and Brave New Films pack Robert Greenwald, next. This isn't just about this U.S. Senate race. This is about changing the system, changing the political system in Delaware so that more everyday Americans can step up to the plate without worrying about ca character assassination and run for office because we need citizen politicians in Dover and in Washington, D.C. to get our state and our country back on track. All right, Robert, you are a follower both of the media and of the politics of this country. I'm assuming your uh, eyes were trained on the results of the primaries this week. Did you celebrate at the victory of Christine O'Donnell as a progressive? You think this is all good news for Democrats? Well, I, I did celebrate in that <clears throat> on a partisan electoral basis, it'll certainly make a Democrat winning the state, the Senate in Delaware, a whole lot more possible, I won't say easy, but a whole lot more possible. So on the sort of specific electoral frame, it was positive. But the bigger picture, Laura, and you've talked about it and you talked about it with Naomi Klein, is the progressive movement. And where are we? <clears throat> where is the energy? Where is the passion? Where is the organizing when fundamentally millions and millions of people are in deep pain and fear <clears throat> over the economic collapse of the country. And I think that's the bigger issue that we all need to look at to make sure that we find a way to address and talk to those people and so that not all of them wind up in the Tea Party. Well, let's talk about, before we get to the question of progressive forces, let's stick with the Tea Party folks for just a minute because the news out of Delaware, Delaware was coupled with the news out of New York where you have this guy, um, Carl Palladino, winning the Republican primary in the governor's race. Take a look. A minimum security prison, for those that aren't aware of it, is usually a dormitory-style facility. For all intents and purposes, looks probably very much like a college campus, except for the barbed wire. We take the barbed wire down, and we have a campus in a rural area that is very accommodating and has all the existing facilities, and we don't have to build something new. Activists have also bristled at Palladino's suggestion that the program would give welfare recipients lessons in, quote, personal hygiene. Well, Democrats have been doing more than bristling, as you can imagine, uh, Robert. They've been kind of, I don't know, gloating over the fact that these are the kind of candidates, O'Donnell and Palladino, who may come to kind of characterize the Republican Party, certainly in New York State. That's the talk. My question to you, as somebody who tracked the role of Fox News in pushing political agendas of pretty much everybody to the right is who has been outfoxed here? Is it the GOP caught off footed at a time when they could have made gains that probably set them back? Or are we likely to see more pressure on Republicans to be harder right? Well, there's no question we're going to see more pressure on Republicans. There's no question that the Tea Party has moved the debate <clears throat> further and further to the right. There's no question that there's a series of schisms. Carl Rove and Sean Hannity got into a fight over it uh, yesterday. But again, I, it, while it's certainly interesting and fascinating and a little bit scary and a little bit like I can't believe I'm seeing this, I would argue more and more and more we fundamentally must find a way to talk to people about the economic issues in the country or the debate's going to go further and further and further right. And we may be gloating. We may win a few Senate seats. We may lose a few. But it's not a social movement. And the change is going to come from social movement, not from a couple of House or Senate races. Well, on the Democratic well, side, there was a disappointment with the SEIU um, activist um, Mike D'Alessandro, who was going up against Stephen Lynch, probably for his vote uh, over health care and didn't manage to upseat the incumbent there. Um, that sounds like, well, re confirmation of what you're saying, that these more progressive 
perspectives still need to be articulated more persuasively? I think that progressive viewpoints definitely need to be articulated more persuasively, uh, use more personal narratives, connect to people more effectively. 17 million people are looking for a job, have lost a job or want a job. We are not reaching those people in the way we should be reaching them. And I think that part of the issue, Laura, is that there is absolutely an important job in getting candidates elected. But there's an equally important job in building a social movement around profound economic inequities. And it's the social movement part of it that we have let go, partly because everyone came together to get rid of Bush. But the biggest change in our country, be it the women's movement, the peace movement, or the labor movement, or the civil rights movement, has always been based on social movements, not putting every bit of energy into electing people. Yeah, and one of the biggest changes in our society over the period you're talking about has been the economic change, uh, transfer of tremendous amount of wealth from working people to the very rich. It's one of the topics you're addressing in your pack as you produce PSAs uh, in the Carly Fiorina race. Take a look from California, from Brave New Films. Carly Fiorina cost me and several thousands like me our jobs. This is the 21st century. Any job can go anywhere. I was one of 6,000 that were laid off. And what was left, you know, stripped down company, and she was fired, basically. She left with a $45 million golden parachute. The facts are, you laid off more than 30,000 American workers, and many of those jobs went to India and China. I know how to create jobs. Carly is not a creator of jobs. She is a destroyer of jobs. Two things. Um, Robert, who would have thought that the Senate race in California would be as tight as it is? And secondly, what's a nice independent filmmaker like you at Brave New Films doing making PSAs for a campaign? Kinda. Well, it's not for the campaign. We do what's called independent expenditure, working separately from the campaign. But we do have a tradition, Laura, of in addition to our work on Afghanistan or on Fox or on the war, of doing some very strong and I think effective independent expenditure pieces. You know, we did create the piece around McCain's mansions that led to the famous question, how many homes do I have? And his answer, I don't know, I'll check with a staffer, um, as well as other pieces. We live in California, Brave New Films is in California, and we felt uh, a very deep concern that because of the tidal wave in the country right now, that's, that we, it was important to educate people about Carly. We did a piece, Carly No Es Mi Amiga, making clear that she is not on the uh, friend of the Latinas. We did a piece uh, connecting her to the Tea Party, who she's openly solicited. And now we're going after Carly as a job killer. That's what she did. She took over a company. She eliminated and outsourced 30,000 jobs. And we have those workers coming forward to say, Carly, uh, cost me my job and she will cost the state of California job. You've got more information about that at your website. We'll put a link. I just want to give you unbelievable congratulations for hitting the 50 million hit mark. How significant is that for you? Well, as you know, Laura, it's very significant when you work in the independent media because, first of all, we don't have money for prints or advertising. And secondly, those 50 million are people who have seen videos and have then pass them along. Again, whether it's uh, economic uh, disparity or it's the war in Afghanistan or it's Carly, over and over again, those are crafted video pieces. People see them, they get them on Facebook, they get them on email, they get them through Twitter, and they say, I want to send them to my friends or my colleagues. They're media that motivates people to take action. We've obviously got a lot of work to be to do, but the fact we could reach that number um, primarily and almost exclusively with people passing along the work we do uh, is a true testament to real citizen democracy. Very exciting. Robert Greenwell, thanks so much for joining us of Brave New Films and Brave New Films Pack. There's a link at our website, grittv.org. Pass it along.